is a new electric bike on the horizon with high quality components, good looking style and engineered in Europe. It's called Iconic One and it's great fun to ride. Let's inspect. Hey, welcome to the tech for all YouTube channel. I'm Michael and I enjoy riding bikes almost as much as inspecting cool tech. Really great to see you here and I hope you're going to enjoy what you see next. Therefore, consider subscribing to the channel for more cool tech inspections. The bike you see me riding right now is called One by a company called Iconic, a new small and very attractive Bulgarian brand for electric and hybrid bikes that hopefully soon will make its name across Europe and the world. Well, that's a new brand, it's actually designed by people from a company you may have already heard of, Eljoy Bikes, with broad experience in the areas of mounting and urban biking and electric scooters both, which means that they should have all the needed knowledge to construct a really good and decent electric bike. Which they apparently did. Disclaimer, I got the Iconic One Cross Country Edition for testing for two weeks. This video is in no way influenced by Iconic, it represents a summary of what I experienced on my own throughout that time. As usual, let me first talk where it is available and which are the closest competitors. At the time making the video, it can be purchased online and delivered to most European countries, hopefully soon in other regions. Just go to Iconic One's official website and use this very nice configuration tool where you can specify the size of the frame and the type of certain components. So in many ways, it is customizable, something like configure to order, and the page also reveals most of the specs, something we'll come back to in just a minute. Price at the moment of making the video is close to 2000 euro for the cross country model, and there are two urban variations which cost around 250 euro less. The Iconic One will certainly face fierce competition because there already are many e bikes by Cube, Specialized, and many others that become more and more affordable, not to mention the invasion of Chinese non popular brands like Himo, Fido, and Same Bike which you should be careful with because are lacking the needed certifications and are often non-compliant with what most countries require in terms of safety regulations, not to mention the components used. That makes the Iconic One a great fit, an e-bike that is designed and manufactured in Europe and perfectly fit for urban transportation and covering all these complex rules and regulations. One simple example, it currently is forbidden in most European countries to have a separate acceleration lever Meaning that most e-bikes are hybrids, you need to be pedaling in order for the motor to work. Good news is that you only have to do the motion and not to really apply any effort. Now let's talk about the bike itself. Part of the specs and data you've probably seen already when I was presenting the configuration page. The Iconic One has been developed for years and appears to be very well balanced and reliable solution already. Packing really good and in some areas mid-range to high-end specs, which are way above the quality of what some other no-name budget e-bikes offer. Gonna start with the electric components, because this is of course the major focus on an e-bike. The motor is in the rear wheel, 250W nominal power, 500W peak power, manufactured by Bafang and luckily for me, it's a motor I know very well from last summer's testing of the Fido M1 fat tire bike. If you've missed that episode, make sure to catch up. Having the motor in the rear side has its pros and cons. The advantage is that there are plenty of good options already, so Iconic One is equipped with the one offering the best balance between performance, reliability, weight and cost. The solution is very effective, can be quite powerful as well, helping a lot even when you're going up hills. The more weight in the rear increases the effectiveness of braking when you go downhills, but it also makes the rear part feel a little unnatural and less responsive when you're jumping, especially if you often do mountain biking with the regular and lighter bike. Due to the slightly increased weight of what I'm generally used to, the riding felt bumpier. In order to improve, I tried to keep the tires a little softer by releasing some of the air pressure, and with some patience you could reach some tolerable balance. Concerning the specs in a glance, we mentioned the 250W motor, there also is a quick releasable 36V 500Wh battery, a 5 grade pedaling assistance system, specially designed Bluetooth controlled lock alarm system, embedded GPS, aluminium custom made frame, 29 by 2.4 inch Continental tires, Shimano Diore brakes and Shimano Diore 10 speed derailleur, Centur Radon air front fork, 
and all that weighs approximately 22 kilos, know that the specs may vary slightly for the urban models. Combined with all these specs, I need to be very clear about a few things. The battery is removable, it has a QR mechanism so you can take it out at any point of time and spare batteries can be purchased as well. The range noted is up to 142 kilometers, which sounds like unbelievably a lot. I need to underline this is achievable in almost perfect conditions. Realistically, if you expect the bike to be the power horse and you to be just enjoying the ride, especially riding on inclines, there would be much less. Practical example, for 7 kilometers off-road uphills, loading the motor to the maximum values, the battery lost around 24% from its charge. Meaning that if you push the bike to the limits, it will consume, of course, a lot more. For flat areas, the discharge happens at much lower rate. I've had friends for 10 kilometers where I also support by pedaling and it only consumed around 5%. And no matter what you do and how you do it, even if the battery is completely empty, this is still a bike and you can go with it anywhere you want. That's the main reason why I'm currently favoring e-bikes over electric scooters, which doesn't mean I don't enjoy riding scooters any longer. Okay, we've got here the motor in steel stand and you can see on the display everything is down to zero, 45% battery level. That's the time, the trip, by the way, two different grades of illumination. If you press and hold and you can see that the screen becomes really pale. Uh, now, I'm going to switch to gear number five, so going up to five. And now, this is where we look at the acceleration and that's actually the load of the motor going up to 750 watts in peak power. So you just have to start pedaling and look at what's going on. Uh, just keep on pedaling. Look at the graph. Already 500 watts. We just hit the peak. I'm a huge fan of the display. It's visible in daylight too, not perfectly, but colors are chosen so well that you can clearly see most of the data even on a bright sunny day. The other part I'm a huge fan of, the specially developed alarm, it's not only locking the bike, but also generating 110 decibel sounds if triggered by the motion sensor. If someone tries to grab and steal your bike, it won't remain unnoticed. This here is the smartphone app for controlling it. There are versions for both Android and iOS. While I was testing the bike, the app was still in an early stage of development. It worked very well though, I just want to say that the interface is now more polished and there might be some more functions. You can see some odometer data, battery info and of course locking or unlocking the bike. Pretty happy to see that Iconic One are addressing one of the major concerns when thinking about getting a decent bike, namely to protect it from thieves. Besides the electrical part, looking into it as a bike, the components are quite promising. The front fork was well responsive, it's good for most occasions. Not perfect for heavyweight downhill adventures, but totally decent for good experience in the mountain without too extreme challenges. As you can see from the footage, I tried some of my favorite trails nearby and it covered the distance in an excellent way. My non-electric bike has a higher end model of Suntour fork and I could hardly tell the difference, but again, haven't pushed it to the limits. Brakes are fantastic, if you're going to ride the bike in the city, both the urban and the cross-country variations will do fine with the disc brakes. Shimano MT200 is what the urban edition is equipped with, well known for being perfectly balanced, but not too expensive at the same time. The cross-country edition is with Shimano Diore M6000, at least this was the setup at the time I had the chance to try it, and make sure to check the website for the current configuration options, it's all linked in the description of the video. So, in the end, to put my thoughts in a few short sentences, that is a bike I liked a lot since the very beginning, from the fact that the good brakes helped me to avoid unpleasant traffic accident, through the large tires, and finishing with the really nice acceleration that the motor provides, and also not to forget the comfort of having the bike well secured thanks to the innovative iLockit system. Yeah, not without its minor flaws, which you can see here on the list, but my gut tells me that this bike is designed for success and I can't wait for the spring in order to ride more. If you want to get yourself such a nice, great-looking, polished, environment-friendly, healthy and also built-in-Europe Iconic One e-bike, head over to the description of the video because I managed to get you a good discount code of the original price. That's all about today's episode. 
A big thanks to Iconic One for the opportunity to try out the bike. Big thanks to you for watching this video on my channel. I would highly appreciate if you subscribe to the channel because there are a lot more cool tech devices I want to expect for you and with you. Stay safe and see you soon. Bye.